Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to the vlog. Today I want to give you guys a bit of an update on the Mercedes, let you know what's going on, how the roof repair is coming, and uh, some of the other things that happened this week. So without further ado, let's dive in. Towards the end of last week, I got the email in finally telling me that my replacement parts had arrived at the Mercedes dealer just up the street away. So I ran up there, picked up the parts. When I picked them up, I was like, Mm, these feel a little heavy, you know, and the price that I paid was also a little bit more than I thought it probably should be thinking, you know, all I need is these two little plastic triangles. But, you know, I found what I thought was the right part on the website, bought it, it came in, I got home with it, and, uh, and this is what I got. I got, well, I don't even think these are for my car. So you can see here, I got like these shoe things. Um, camera wants to focus on my face, that's fine. I got these shoe things that came in, you know, it's got like some nuts with it, some like spacers it looks like, some bolts. And you know, that's, that's really not what I was looking for. So after getting that in, after looking at that, I decided, you know what, I really need to buy the repair manual, figure out what it looks like the repair job is, see what parts I actually do need and try to get this thing figured out. And all that then led me to this moment. Risk of death caused by parts conducting high voltage? What? So yes, at that point I found out that fixing this issue is possibly, very possibly, much more involved than I was anticipating. So let's take a look at this again. Let's talk about some of the things I figured out because of this information and my thoughts on what we're going to do about this. Ooh, look at that. We're just barely being saved. If the wind was blowing, we'd, ooh, 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 gross. So some of what happened after reading many of your comments on my last video, kind of talking about me discovering that it was broken, you know, I decided to do a little more research, found out, you know, most people are finding that to repair these roofs, they're being quoted anywhere between like three and $4,000. And as soon as I saw that, I was like, heck no, we are not doing that. So there were definitely questions that needed to be answered. One of cost, involvement. I mean, after seeing risk of death by electrical shock, I was like, do I want to do this? So the most of all of that then brings us to Monday. Now on Monday, one of my roommates needed a ride up to the airport nice and early in the morning. I thought, sure, why not? It's not that big of a deal, let's go. So we get on the freeway, we start driving up. We make it mm, maybe 10 miles and all of a sudden my car starts screaming at me. Lo and behold, my rear right tire had found a nice large piece of metal um, you know, it's, my dash starts flashing like tire failure imminent or something and I'm like, what is going on? And I see that I'm all the way down to like 20 PSI in my one tire. And I basically looked at my roommate and I'm like, we're getting off the freeway now. So luckily we were able to get off the freeway, everything was all right, took a look at the tire. Sure enough, I found the piece of metal, just, you know, sitting there lodged in a tire, thought maybe it was a nail. Found out later, it was like, the thing was like this big around. It was this huge piece of metal like this long. It was like, I mean, that thing put a nail to shame. So luckily we were able to get a little bit more air in the car. We were only one exit away from the tire shop that, you know, just the brand they usually go to. So I was barely able to limp it along all the way up to the shop. You know, it was 6.30 in the morning though. So waited an hour and a half till they opened. Got in there, we were able to uh, start looking at options and I'm mildly ashamed to say that I'm running different tires on the back than the front now. Um, but when there's still life in the tires, you do what you gotta do, you know? I mean, it was, it was like $600 just to replace those rear tires. Yikes. Now, for those of you familiar with Mercedes, I know what you're probably thinking. You're probably thinking to yourself, well, they should have been run flats. You should have been fine. Well, turns out the dealership I bought it from when they replaced the tires they did not put run flats on the tires um, in fact the tires they put on like I couldn't even find we called like four different places no one had the tires like the earliest we could have got them ordered in was like three days so we decided to scrap that I really would have liked to put some Michelin's on it uh, it turns out the Pilot Sport 3's do come in a run flat 
but those are also special order. So we wound up just putting Continentals back on the car. It looks like that's what it comes with. So we're rocking basically OEM tires, I guess, which isn't a bad thing. It should be good. I mean, they run flat, so I should have less issues with them. And uh, so far they feel pretty good, so we're happy about that. All that chaos though led me to having a conversation with some of the guys over there at Mercedes. I was able to ask them about, you know, the parts I got for the sunroof, you know, kind of determined that I did have the wrong parts. But here's the crazy part. The service guy told me that the right parts are like $700. So apparently you've got to buy like, you know, half the entire assembly for the roof you know for the sunroof and stuff and that whole thing has to be replaced which like some people mentioned in the comments of the last video involves removing the headliner I think you have to remove the glass too and it just seems way more involved than it should need to be and you know the parts were quoted at like 700 or 750 dollars he said the work time is like another four four and a half hours so that's another like 750 dollars so you're looking at like at least $1,400 just because two little plastic pieces broke. What? Well, shoot, last time I was up here, they still had the pay station. But uh, it would appear that it's self-pay now. And who carries around cash anymore? I don't carry around cash. And I don't have a check on me. So in order to avoid any possible issues because I did see a few rangers here I guess we're not going to really hang out long um anyhow continuing our conversation uh I personally don't believe that there's not a way to repair it by simply you know just replacing those little plastic pieces I uh you know it seems like you should be able to detach the rails well enough that I see I mean if you're just coming through for a little bit, you should be able to park here. You know, it looks like the rangers are gone, but you know. Me and some of my friends were giving grief last time. We came up here without a pass and we parked somewhere for just a few minutes. So I don't want to risk it. Not risking it for that biscuit. Ain't worth it. But this is really nice. It's, a lot of this water I think is, it's more like snow melt and like glacier water. So I think it's a lot colder and it just looks amazing. It looks like, it looks really cool. I'd love to come back up when I can have more time and not worry about, you know, possibly getting fined and uh, oh, take pictures because, let's see if we can ditch over here. Oh my gosh, this is gorgeous. I'm sorry, we'll continue the conversation in a second. Um, take a look at that, oh my gosh. Check that out. Holy what, look at that color. Wow, that is so cool. Anyhow, like I was saying, I find it hard to believe that there's not a way to, you know, open it up enough that you can't just slip on some new guides and get those attached where they need to be. So I'm going to be looking more into that. Um, like I said, I don't think the guides are damaged. What I think happened is, you know, one of these times when I opened the roof up and I was on the freeway, I think it just, you know, torqued it some or something and wound up breaking them enough that then when it went to close back in, it just kind of ate them up. So hopefully I can find a way to loosen those rails enough that I can get some new guides on there, get it all worked in. And if so, I will definitely be sure, you know, we're gonna film all of that, make sure you guys know how it can be done. But uh, I think the real trick with doing an easy fix like that, doing it on the cheap, will be really trying to make sure that those rails aren't damaged, that everything looks like it is correct. I think it's just going to be figuring out how to get it taken apart just enough to get the new pieces on without actually having to take the entire top of the car apart. That though will pretty well wrap up this update video. If you got value out of this, if you like the update, hit that thumbs up button if you want to keep up to date on the repairs to the Mercedes, the stuff we're doing with it. Go ahead and subscribe. Be sure to hit that notification bell so that you know when new videos go live. And I'll see you guys in the next one. So long.